Hi, what is soul murder? How does it happen to you? And how do you survive it? How do you find your true self again after having your soul murdered? Uh, this is the great Johannes speaking again for yet another episode. And I want to dive into this topic of soul murder. How does it happen to you? Um, what is the purpose of having a personality? And when you are born, perhaps, I, I don't believe in the blank slate theory. So I do think that human beings are born with some kind of a personality, but it's not a fully fledged personality. You will obviously also develop it after you are born in your early childhood and in your teenage years. Now, what, what happens if you are already the victim of early childhood abuse, of adverse experiences early in your life through neglect or violence or verbal abuse or emotional abuse, to the point where maybe you're 10 years old and you are already suffering from something like PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. You see, your personality is supposed to be that thing that describes you to the outside world. Your personality is how you behave and how you present yourself to others so you can become part of society and play a role in it or more than one role. But if you are the victim of abuse or neglect, or other negative experiences, that means your personality is influenced by this. You already start to develop a personality in response to abuse and neglect. For example, if you were always told to be quiet, a lot of people who are told to be quiet as children, who are really told to shut up, they turn to other devices, equipments to make sounds, such as musical instruments. A lot of musicians, in my view, were told to shut up as children once too often, and they began to seek out other methods of expressing themselves by, for example, making music on the piano or whatever is available to you, or drums and so on and so forth. The, the instrument then becomes a substitute for the vocal communication that you really desire. But none of this yet amounts to soul murder. Soul murder is when you have developed a personality in, in response to abuse and neglect, and then by the time you are 16, 17, or 18 years old or so, and then you are told that this person you have become, you are not allowed to be. Say you are this musician that I speak of, because you were told to shut up as a child, you started to play the piano, and you became really good at it as a way of communicating your needs and your desires and your emotions because you weren't allowed to speak in the living room, for example, then to be told that you may not be a musician and you have to be a lawyer or you have to be an accountant instead, to be told that you are not allowed to pursue this creative career in the music industry, that is soul murder because your personality was already developing itself in response to the abuse and you already became something because of that in this case, in the example, a musician or a music producer or, or whatever, a guitarist or whatever you're into. And then to be told your personality now doesn't even matter anymore. Your personality needs to be made subservient to a higher plan. For example, you are supposed to become the family's lawyer or you are supposed to uh, uh, take over the farm or you are supposed to uh, do whatever or do accounting or whatnot or go to university and study there and make your family proud. You are told to kill off your uh, blossoming personality, the one thing that you were going to use to present yourself to the outside world, how you became, how you already, in fact, as a teenager, as a teenager started to become known that is soul murder. And to give you a personal example, I mean, I mentioned becoming a musician. That's what happened to me. When I was a child, I wasn't allowed to be vocal, to make noise, to make sound in the vicinity of my father, and my mother would severely punish me for it if I did, even if I locked myself up or if they locked me so myself up in my bedroom, in my little playroom. Even then, if I was too loud or too noisy, I was still told to shut up. I had to sit still and be quiet, even in my own room, away from the living room. Uh, in some cases, I was even told 
to go to the garage. We had a car garage. I was told to go to the garage, be quiet, and those sounds coming out of your mouth, you are not allowed to make them. That is what I was told. Surprise, surprise. In response to this command to be quiet, I began to find other ways to make myself heard. In fact, we did have a piano at home, and my father did play on it sometimes, so I picked up on it and I started to play the piano uh, when he wasn't there, obviously. We also had this primitive plastic keyboard, a synthesizer, very primitive, like a toy, a toy synthesizer, and I, I taught myself to play music on it. I taught myself Furelise, for example, this classic piano piece. Uh, I taught myself by listening to the notes and trying to find which ones they were because I couldn't read uh, music notation yet. By the time I was 14 years, I was, always, I was always intrigued by the old recording equipment that we had in our house, a very primitive microphone and a cassette tape recorder. I would record my voice on it and the keyboard and try to make music that way in my room or in the garage or above the garage, away from the living room. Uh, by the time I was 14 years old, we had this PC computer with MS-DOS on it. We didn't even have Microsoft Windows yet, but I started to make music on it. I found this tool, a, a software program that allowed you to make beats and uh, do a sort of pattern tracking, like make a little playlist as we do nowadays on uh, modern software. Uh, it was extremely primitive. I sampled my CDs and cassette tapes to get the sounds that I needed, like a bass or a hi-hat or a drum. or, a, or a, I even looped tiny bits of synthesizer sounds from other people that I found on their records. And then I could like, I could loop them around and then I could actually turn that into a playable sound so I could play melodies on the computer that way. It was all ludicrously primitive, but I must have made close to 100 tracks as a teenager. No one cared, of course. My parents certainly didn't care. But I did start to send out demo tapes. I sent out a demo tape to this production company, to another one, and to another one. At first, it wasn't good enough. But then, by the time I got, uh, by the time I was 18 years old, so after four or five years of, you know, humbly learning to produce music, I got some of my tracks played in local clubs. To me, this was all very exciting. And by the time I was 17, I thought that I wanted to study something in the music industry. My point is this. As a teenager, in response to my command of having to be quiet and silent, I had begun to develop a musical personality as the alternative way of communicating myself. I had taught myself as a teenager how to produce music on a computer, electronic dance music. I was starting to get so good at it that my tracks were being appreciated and being played in the clubs. This is how I communicated myself. I remember now because I put this away. I repressed this so deeply in the back of my head that I completely forgot about the fact that I used to be a musician. And I, I was known as the guy who made his music. By the time I was 17, 18, 19, year, 19 years old, other people my age, my peers, knew me as the guy who made this type of EDM or dance music or whatever it was in those days, techno music. And that is who I was. And then I was told to kill my personality. My soul was murdered. I was told that I can't pursue this career in music, which was already a response to the abuse I was getting. And I was told to go to university and study, guess what? Agriculture, which had absolutely nothing to do with my personality, nothing to do with uh, who I was going to be. I believed that I had to remain loyal to the wishes of my parents, hoping that one day they would come to love me. But of course, they never did. They never ended up loving me. And my loyalty, my loyalty to them has been the most gigantic waste of time of my life. I lost 25 years of my life pursuing some stupid career in business or in management that I never cared about. And now I realize who I really am. I am a music producer.